So I am joined here today by ASU women's basketball sophomore Taya Hansen. Taya, thank you so much for coming in. Second episode of Beyond the Ring. How are you doing right now? Oh, I'm just so thankful to be here talking with you. I mean, in such a crazy time, this is it's just bizarre, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm good. I'm, yeah, I'm great. I mean, you seem you seem pretty great. So, but but like, what's life been like for you now since your season was kind of cut short? You guys were at Pac-12 in Las Vegas, basically a month ago this week. So how how's your life changed in the last month? Yeah, there's definitely been a turn of events. I mean, it, there was a heartbreak heartbreak period there for especially for seniors, just our season being cut short there and. Um, that game against Cal being its last one. Um, so that that was just hard to take in and coming to the realization that, wow, it's this season's done. My, my sophomore season is over. But um, there's an opportunity for, right, for me right now to just step up into this time and get better, get better. But, yeah, it's just – not only allowed me to like harness my basketball skills in this period of time because I mean I'm in quarantine right now I can't leave my home all I have is is my basketball and school I guess I have I have to do school right now and hanging out with my family but uh, um, no it's just a, a great time for me to hone in on my basketball skills but has opened the door for me to reflect and take some time to grow as a person and um, yeah, get myself to the place where I can dominate this, this next season. So I'm trying to take a more positive outlook on the situation because there's a lot of negatives to it um, and it's very serious. So yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what I've been up to right now and my mindset towards it going forward. Yeah, I mean, you you mentioned it. I think you have you and your teammates, of course, have suffered so much change. The entire world mm -hmm. has kind of come to that, that halting place. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned staying positive and keeping that, like, mm -hmm. that right mindset of, like, I'm, gonna, I'm getting ready for next season. Where does that come yeah. from, though? Like, how do you stay positive? Yeah, I think with all this uncertainty, it can it can drive you crazy. Not knowing when uh, we'll be able to be together as a team, if we'll even have a season next. Like, there's just we have no like we have nothing to hold on to right now that says like this is what is going to be the outcome. Um, so, I mean if I wasn't able to like be present and like think positively, I would, I would probably drive myself a little insane. <laughs> um, but I, that's what I'm doing right now is just what's giving me this joy and this excitement to be able to stay positive um, during this, this crazy time is being present. Had a lot of experience, not only with AU basketball, but also with Canada basketball. Can you just talk a little bit about like what what was your journey with Canada basketball up until this point? Yeah, uh, I have been journeying with Canada basketball since I was fourteen, and have been able to represent my country in Turkey, in Spain, Mexico, Thailand this last summer. I've I am just so thankful for the journey that I have had with them because. It has honestly brought me here to ASU and hearing that the Olympics is, is postponed and not happening this summer um, is like sickening for knowing that um, as an athlete, a part of Canada basketball, like what those girls have been working towards, what these individual athletes in, um, in track and run, like all these different events that they've preparing their bodies to peak perform at this time is is kind of a hard pill to swallow knowing that they have a whole nother year and that 
um, that their training has to test has to shift now. Right. Um, but for me, uh, with within Canada basketball, I wasn't necessarily a prospect for this Olympic year. Right. However, due to it being postponed another year, uh, I have this junior season to um, just perform at my best and that may open up the door for me to possibly enter into that Olympic team to have the opportunity to um, get a tryout and um, a spot on that Olympic team. So who knows if that is my what's ahead for me, but um, I'm aiming towards that. I'm working towards that right now. Um, because I mean, I would love to, to be in Tokyo next summer. Yeah. But I want to yeah. go back a little bit. Like when, when you had heard that news that the NCAA tournament was canceled, what was your first mm -hmm. reaction? What was kind of the first thing that went through your mind? Honestly, I was so struck and speechless and honestly like emotionless it was it was weird i just didn't know how to take it it didn't feel real i was like this is this is not happening like we're still going to have the tournament um this isn't the last time i get to play with the seniors all these things and then no it like it did become a reality and and it was sad it was it was sad to see um, just my teammates in, in sadness and, and heartbreak, be, knowing that that was it for them. Um, and like, for me compared to that, like I was, I was still heartbroken that I wasn't able to experience a, an NCAA tournament, but like knowing, I, I knew that I did have more to come. So I was kind of setting my sights on that, but then also grieving with, with my teammates. Um, Cause it was, it, yeah, it's just, you can't explain it. It, these things don't happen and it did happen. So now we're just trying to look forward. When you heard that news that the Olympics was going to be postponed, what was the, what was your first thought there? Just like with the NCAA mm -hmm. tournament, it's shocking. The Olympics though, it, people kind of felt like it was coming. Mm -hmm. It was still a big shock when it did occur. What was your first thought though when mm -hmm. that news broke? Yeah. Again, it didn't feel real, but at the same time, there was this glint of hope for me um, to be able to participate in the Olympics as I've always dreamed of since I was a little girl. Um, so ha knowing that there's a small possibility just uh, inspires me even more and makes, makes me want to, to work even harder towards being able to achieve that. One thing right now that you feel like you're most grateful for, despite everything that's kind of shifted and I don't want to say has been taken, but just kind of has, mm -hmm. has been changed and stuff like yeah. that yeah no for sure um i feel like there's a lot of negativity in the world right now and um it's hard to take a positive outlook on things mm -hmm. but i have a lot to be to be grateful for and thankful for um coming home i now have my family here that I have been able to spend time with. Um, I, ha I haven't spent time with them like this since the summer, last summer. So this has been very special for me. Um, but another thing that I'm grateful for is my teammates right now. Um, this has actually opened the door for us to come together and unite and just encourage each other through this difficult time, like holding each other um, accountable, um, joking with one another. And I've actually been able to get to know the freshmen a lot more. Right. Um, we normally don't 
interact with the freshmen until June or um, July. So we're able to bump up that time and um, just get excited and pumped up for this next season all together so early. So, and that's what I love. Like, I love getting pumped up and excited for, for what's to come because I believe we could do something very special this year. So, yeah, it's just, um, I'm very grateful for them and that opportunity to encourage, um, build trust and um, get to know my teammates at this time and step into the, the leadership role that, um, that I am going to be in. If at the end of all of this, 2021 comes around, you Canada Basketball gets in contact with you and says, hey, we want you trying out for the Olympic team. We think there's a spot for you. You played well. What would, what would you, like, what would go through your mind if something like that occurred yeah. within the next 12 months, let's say? I mean, when I heard that the Olympics were getting postponed uh, to 2021, I mean, it's, it's terrible and it's tragic. Um, however, it did spark a little bit of hope in me in knowing that the door has opened slightly for me to possibly have a spot on that team to be in Tokyo next, next summer. Um, but that is really all depending on how I do this season. And, um, if a spot has opened up, if they are looking at me to, um, to be an asset to the team, um, it's kind of in the air right now, but there's some silver lining and, um, the door is cracked open just a little bit. So I'm just working hard this, this year to, um, be the best that I can be for ASU and for our team to succeed this summer and hopefully with within those actions um, some Olympics may fall into that <laughs> so it's it's it sounds like it's like it's not like a for sure plan but it's like you're not saying no to it right like you're not just saying, saying the no door, the door's been open mm -hmm. yeah what? but I am I am on track for 2024 Olympics in Paris. So that is something that um, is embroidered in gold and is up there. Like that is what I'm going for. Like I will um, be representing my country in Paris. Like that has been my goal since I was little. And so that's what I plan to, to make happen. But hey, if I can do it a little bit earlier, I mean, I'm not complaining at all. What can you tell people about Canada basketball that they may not know? Like, what can you, what can you attest to the talent or the abilities of like a program like that, that many people may not know about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, uh, what people may not know about is with Canada basketball is that a lot of us girls have been on a development track since we were 13, 14 years old. And I think um, Canada basketball does a good job of identifying talents at a young age and getting them implemented into the program um, so that as they get older, they know the systems, they know, um, they can just grow as basketball players as they go about their their careers aside from Canada basketball, but um, that that uh, plan is instructed like in in them. And so since since I was thirteen, like I've been on development team, like the cadet team, the junior team. I've been attending ID camps, like all these different things. Um, and then in the summers, I would compete for, for Team Canada in uh, world championships and uh, America qualifiers. And so all these different teams um, are leading up to potentially the day of being on that Olympic team. And so, yeah, that's something that, that uh, people may not know about Canada basketball is that they're very strategic and um, they do like, a good job of looking out for for talent for for many years and um, supporting athletes along the way in their journey to hopefully accomplishing their goal of being on the Olympic team. You said that 
being on the Olympic team in, in 2024, it's like in goal, mm-hmm. like I, like that's, that's your plan. Mm-hmm. What do you think is going to go through your mind if you can make that team in 2024? Honestly, I'd be speechless. Like that has been a dream of mine since I started on this basketball journey. And now knowing that that could be a possibility is is so exciting and so motivating. Um, but if I'm picturing myself in that moment, like having Canada across my chest, like holding hands, singing the national anthem with my teammates in the Olympics, like it doesn't get any higher than that for for an athlete representing their country like that is the pinnacle um and so that just brings me so much joy and excitement um and invigorates me to get to that point um and because there's just there's so much that's 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 the biggest accomplishment that um an athlete can do for their country there's so much pride and passion um, there's, it's, it's really like no other. Um, you're stepping into, it's, oh, I've heard a lot of people say that the PAC 12 is the best conference for women's basketball in the entire country. Mm-hmm. One of the players in that conference is about to be the number one pick in the WNBA draft. Like that's mm-hmm. how deep. And then her teammate is expected to go number two. I'm of course referring to Sabrina Ionesco and Sacha Sabali. Yeah. When you play in a conference that has names like that and has talent like that, what does that do for your mindset when you step on the court? Mm -hmm. I mean, those two players, they're, they're phenomenal. And they've spent hours and hours like working on their craft and getting them to where they want to be within that. And so um, being able to play against them is just insane inspires me to to be the best that I can be and to to step in to the roles that I've been given and to rise above like they have um but no the Pac-12 is the best conference and they every game is a difficult game and so um as much as your talent matters your heart your drive and your competitiveness matters even more And that is what those players um, had and what they were able to to showcase and and bring to uh, this conference. And so that's something that I'd like to to carry on and to step up into that and, um, yeah, and to dominate like they they dominate. I mean, that's that's my goal is to to be the best that that I can be. and to bring my teammates, bring my teammates with me. You, uh, you mentioned dominating on the court. You've talked about your leadership off the court, not only during mm-hmm. this time in quarantine, but also like when you step on the court next season. What mm-hmm. do you want your legacy to be, though, uh, as not only as an ASU athlete, but also just like as uh, somebody who was a part of the ASU community? What kind of legacy mm-hmm. do you want to leave behind? Like when it that's is a great, that's a great question. The legacy that I want to leave behind is that I was a player that loved her teammates, loved the sport, loved her community, and was thankful for them, um, but someone that just laid it all on on the court and gave everything that she had um, because of her her passion and joy for the sport. In a season that ended so abruptly. Abruptly. Yeah. What was one of the highlights, though, of this season for you? Like, did you have Mm -hmm. one moment that came to your mind where you were like, that's that's the best moment this season? For sure. I think that weekend at home um, against Oregon and Oregon State, that was by far the coolest moment of – of this season I mean being one of the one of the teams that beat out Oregon uh is pretty cool to to speak on and it wasn't like um they lost the game themselves like no we came at them and we were ready to to just 
take on what whatever they threw at us and and more um and we were just able to to come together I think that was the most connected game we've ever had as a team this last season and we did something really special that weekend um and then that Oregon State game to just keep grinding keep grinding um and come out with that that dub was awesome but I think one of the uh, coolest moments too was when the student section all came down and, and flooded the court and were supporting us and hyping us up like that that's just the coolest feeling because um we honestly like we play for the fans we play for each other first of all um and then we play for the fans so they mean the world to us and and that was just uh, such a special time to to be able to give it back to them yeah you you mentioned that's like one of the that was one of the high moments it seems like in that might be one of the high moments thus far in your career I would say right that in sweet 16 the the first year Mm -hmm, my freshman year so the the fact that the season did get cut short your Mm guys's last game was that first round loss in the Pac-12 tournament against Cal Berkeley what was Mm -hmm. going through your mind when you guys kind of came out of that loss and the NCAA tournament was still going on what was going through your mind, though, initially when you would kind of when you guys had faced a team like that and ended up losing early on in the Pac-12 tournament? Yeah, honestly, it sucked. It it sucked big time. It was so such a terrible, terrible way to go out, um, and was definitely not what we were expecting because a week ago we had just beat that team by 20. Mm -hmm. Um, But if I'm being honest, like we definitely didn't come prepared as well as we could have been to play mentally. Um, And yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't finish out and we weren't taking care of the little things that we needed to that game. And so um, they, they were the better team. And so they definitely deserve that, that win over us as, as hard as it is for me to say to say that um because we we should have gone farther we and that that was that we we definitely came up short in our goals within that um but it did allow us to come back um to reflect on that and to come together to be better um in preparation for the NCAA tournament which didn't actually happen so I think that's where there's just some heartbreak within that is that we had that really really tough loss and went out the way that it wasn't supposed to um, end on Um, but then we did come back to practice and was working our our butts off to to have a better outcome in the NCAA tournament Um, and then turn of events happened so I mean, in I know that the season didn't nec- it, the season didn't end any for anybody like the way that they had wanted it to. If you go all the way up to the top for teams like Oregon, who did win the Pac-12, yeah, you go all the way down to the bottom for the teams that may not have even made the NCAA tournament or the NIT mm-hmm. tournament. Mm-hmm. Everybody still felt like they had unfinished business at the end of this season. For sure, for sure. But I mean, when you look at a loss like that. How does that fuel you going into your junior year, going into next year? Yeah. I mean, you're right. There, there was unfinished business everywhere. Um, mm-hmm. Oregon wanted their championship, and uh, we wanted um, our early eight, and mm-hmm. all these different teams. Everyone wanted something more. Everyone was um, going after that. and. So there, yeah, so it's, it's just tough not being able to, to finish it out, having that unfinished business. Um, but it honestly fuels me to not want to feel that ever again going forwards, to not ever feeling like we as a team didn't give it all that we had. Um, because... I mean, that's what happened in that last game without us knowing that that was our last game. And so um, collectively, us returners are all feeling the same thing about 
we're going to play every single game like it's our last. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what's going to drive us to having success this year. Um, this is something that I'm kind of, I'm, I'm asking pretty much every person in this series. Do you have like mm -hmm. a word that you think of, like that's kind of your guiding force throughout this quarantine process, something that people might gravitate towards? Like, do you have a, like a word of mm -hmm. the day or like a word during this time or a thought during this time that just sticks with you to help you throughout mm -hmm. this tough time? That's a great question. I haven't really thought of that. Um, I mean, I have a, a few phrases, um, just like being present, enjoying the moment, controlling the controllables. Um, those are definitely phrases to, to keep me going and to keep my sights set on staying positive and um, just doing all that you can with what you've been given. Um, uh, but I think if I'm thinking about like this year and this season of like what my word is, uh, I think it's courage and um, courage to choose that over comfort, um, to be able to like step out, to be bold and um, yeah, to be the best that you can be in, in every situation. So that's kind of what what I'm looking at for my word this, this year. And that kind of, that definitely carries through this time in quarantine, um, where it's hard to try and find courage in, in different things. So just finding ways to, to use that. Taya, thank you so much for the time. I can tell that you're expressing as much courage as you can during this time. <laughs> thank you for sitting down with us on this series and thank you for sharing more of your journey and your story, not only with the Olympics, but also with your college team, wishing you and your family at this time, all the best, of course. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to, to ask me these questions and opening the opportunity for me to share. Um, yeah, it's, it's very special.